Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to make sure we're set up here on our Facebook page. All right, here we go. I got us in here. Excellent. So I can just see your comments. Make sure we're set up here on oh. our Facebook. There we go. Okay, I just want to make sure I can see comments rolling in. All right. Here we are. July team training. My goodness. <laughs> when did July happen? Am I the only one that feels like months are flying by? Like, it is insane. <laughs> like July. My goodness. <laughs> okay, but here we are. It is July um, and I'm excited to be here with you guys for our monthly business training here in the Dough Planner Collective. Uh, if you are new here, if you are new to the Dough Planner Collective, drop me a hey, I'm new in the comments because uh, I'd like to celebrate you and welcome you into our group, into our community. If you've been here seasoned with us for a while, hello, welcome back. Let me know where you guys are coming in from today. I'm coming in from Port Colburn, Ontario, which is on Lake Erie, close to the New York state border. Um, it's a rainy day today, but nonetheless, it's been nice and warm up here in Canada, finally. Um, nice to see you guys. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Don. What's going on, Veronica? Hey, Paula. Um, hi. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. Um, so if you, again, if you're new to this group, just to give you a little uh, kind of how this works, how we roll here in the Dough Planner Collective, um, we basically are a community and a collective of wellness advocates from all over the world. And you'll probably see them all rolling in here in the comments. Oh my God, Debbie, you're in Ridgeway. Hello. You're like 25 minutes from me. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so yeah, we, we basically collect here. Um, we are such an amazing community. So welcome again, if you're new, if you guys have been here from day one with me, hey, hey, thank you guys for following along. Um, um, and yeah, I do a live business training once a month and also a live team call once a month. I have a guest who comes in and joins me for our team collective call. And we drop lots of extra bonuses and fun stuff in this group. So the whole purpose is to help you scale your doTERRA business um, from side hustle to full-time freedom or keep it as a side hustle if you're just looking at making some extra money and helping people along the way. The whole purpose is to help you create more more income, more impact around the world with these essential oils. And I'm just absolutely honored to be here to guide you along the way. Um, I personally scaled my own doTERRA business from zero to diamond. And, and I am just excited to share whatever wisdom I may have um, that can help you as you grow your empire as well. So Hello, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. All right, so let's dive into today's call. Um, today, I wanted to, now I'm realizing I can actually see your comments right here, so I don't have to have it up on my phone, which is great. Um, so for today's call, I wanted to focus on, or this month's call, I wanted to focus on um, confidence in network marketing. And um, so a few reasons why I chose this topic. One being, in order for our businesses to grow, we have to have um, we have to have business partners, right? Like, I mean, it, technically we don't have to, you can build this purely off of customers, but yes, that is going to take a heck of a lot longer. Um, it is going to be you doing it on your own, right? And with network marketing, we really want to a leverage our networks, but also be able to leverage our duplication power, meaning that there's more of you out there doing these things, which helps our business grow more sustainably, a little bit quicker. Um, and it's a lot more fun. So there's going to be some things that you come up against along your journey. As we know, doTERRA has chosen the network marketing business industry to be a part of um, when it came to selling their oils. And I don't know if you guys know a lot about the background, but let me give you a little bit of insight um, in terms of where doTERRA came from in terms of how doTERRA started and why they chose network marketing. And then let's go into helping you build that confidence in network marketing so that you are not shaken when someone may say something or when someone might ask you a question, you kind of have that confidence in order to actually share um, you know, your heart and share 
I'm just, I, I mean, I, I even answer any questions, right? Or sometimes it's about debunking some myths. So first off, let's talk a little bit about doTERRA so we can build confidence in the background and why doTERRA has chosen this avenue. So um, some of you may know, but doTERRA did, um, doTERRA's founding owners and executives. So we have seven owners of doTERRA, our seven executives. We are a privately owned company, which is huge because the fact that we have no outside investors mean, means that our seven owners, so you probably know our seven owners, right? Emily Wright, uh, Dr. Hill, Dr. David Hill, uh, David Sterling, Corey Lindley, um, Greg Wolfart. Um, who am I missing? Uh, did I say Corey Lindley already? I think I did. Um, who am I missing? Why am I drawing a blank on who I haven't said yet? Anyways, <laughs> I'm totally like drawing a blank on, oh, um, um, oh my gosh, why am I not thinking of his name? Who created Lifelong Vitality? Oh, my heart. I'm so sorry. Anyways, he's not on here. He's not watching. So uh, let's move on. <laughs> Uh, Greg Cook. Yes. Thank you, Molly. Greg Cook. I forgot about. Nope. Eric Larson is the master distributor. So Eric Larson and Justin Harrison share one account. So they're actually 1001 in your back office. They're called the master distributors. They share an account. They're co-applicants because they were the very first people enrolled in doTERRA. So everyone is on their team. Okay. Which is kind of cool. Rob Young. Thank you very much, Tali. Um, Rob Young. Rob Young is who created Lifelong Vitality and um, name I was blanking on. All right. So we've got these seven owners, right? Okay. Now they own doTERRA. And again, no outside investors means that they have full control and say over what choices and decisions are made within doTERRA growing the company. A lot, a lot, like almost all, most of the network marketing companies, they have outside investors. So they're either, either publicly traded so that there's investors that have shares in the company, et cetera, which means there's outside influences in terms of where does the money go? How do they make decisions on compensation? How do they make decisions on where profits in the company goes, et cetera? Now, if the, we had outside investors, we would not be doing things like healing hands and a lot of the humanitarian relief efforts that we do. A lot of that would probably not happen because there's a lot of money being invested into healing hands because doTERRA pays 100% of the overall costs. Any money donated to healing hands goes 100% to healing hands. Okay, and then doTERRA covers all the corporate costs of running the, um, the actual uh, charitable foundation. So when you have outside investors, a lot of them are not going to be okay with many of the profits being diverted to, um, you know, such programs, etc. But the beautiful thing about doTERRA being a privately owned company is they get to keep the decisions and how the company runs. And, um, and that's why you see a lot of this, uh, a lot of the things that we do is very much humanitarian based. So doTERRA is much like a humanitarian company that sells essential oils, like the world's best essential oils that also happens to be wrapped up in the network marketing industry so that those of us that are sharing these beautiful oils also get compensated and get to grow our own businesses on top of it, which is super cool. Cool. Hey, Lauren. Um, so this is um, this is what's really, really cool about doTERRA. OK, so that's just one one little snippet. Now, um, out of our owners and executive team, yes, we did have some of our owners come from another essential oil company, which you're all very probably familiar with. Okay, It's like the only other network marketing essential oil company around, been around for many years. They were on the board of directors for this other essential oil company. So they had, yes, experience in the essential oil industry and in, in, in essential oils and network marketing, um, but they had a lot of feelings, a lot of things about the integrity of the way this company ran, um, a lot of things that didn't sit well with them. And for their reasons, they left. Now, yes, they had um, a... 
um, non-compete order, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I even had one in my old company. We had, you know, our personal trainers. I used to work in the fitness industry. I was general manager for 10 years. So I ran a fitness club and we had these rules with our personal trainers that if they left our company and started their own personal training business, there was a non-compete order where they couldn't actually take our clients with them to their new venture. But would it happen? all the time. We would have personal trainers all the time that were like, you know what? Cool. I actually want to start my own company because I don't like the way you do this, this, and this. So I'm going to go do my own thing and do it the way I want to do it, the way I see fit. And it happens, right? So um, for reasons that we're not going to talk about on this call, um, we did have Dr. David Hill, Emily Wright, and um, David Sterling. We had them leave the company that they, or they chose to leave the company they were with for their own reasons. There were, you know, reasons and issues and what have you, integrity things. And there was things about the way that they saw the essential oils being sourced or the way that um, employees were being treated, the way inequality in their company and just some of the uh, non-integrity ways that um, the marketing was being done. And they didn't want to stand for that. And for their reasons, they left. And a year later, um, Emily Wright um, went to, you know, uh, David Hill, went to um, David Sterling. And, you know, and she was like, well, you know, we had our reasons for leaving. Why do we not why do we not start our own company with with the morals and the values and the mission and the vision that we had? And so they literally took out second mortgages on their home. They started with nothing. If you have not seen the beginning, um, it's called, you can YouTube it, it's called The Genesis. So look up doTERRA, The Genesis. And it is um, a story of their, their beginnings. It is amazing. Any new builder that I have, that is one of the videos that they have to watch, The Genesis, because it really tells you exactly where doTERRA started from. So all this to say, they actually had a multi-million dollar investor come forward that wanted to invest in them starting doTERRA. And they sat at this board and they decided, guys, no, we can't do this because they want to have partnership that, th that these investors would then have say over what they did. And they're like, the whole reason we're starting doTERRA is so that we have control over what we believe to be right what we believe to be the right thing, the right thing for the plants, for the world, for the ecosystems, for the, the people we wanna work with, we have to keep control. And that's why they did this on their own and stayed a privately owned company and will forever stay a privately owned company. Um, so all this to say, they had a decision to make. They had the decision to make, how do we want to sell these oils? And they had just come from the network marketing industry, okay? And they're, and I, I think it was David Sterling who was like, no, 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 not happening. We're not doing it that way. He wanted to just sell the oils um, through retail, through store, right? So if you're in Canada, we have Sage, right? Sage Natural Wellness, which is a retail store in malls and they sell essential oils, right? They popped up probably five years after doTERRA and like really riding on the coattails of doTERRA, right? And um, my cousin was an assistant manager for Sage, so I know a lot about how their company runs, but they're in a retail in the mall. And this is, this is originally what doTERRA's vision was, to be a retail store. Uh, well, this is what David Sterling wanted, because I think he just didn't want to go back to network marketing, but they all said, there's no way, guys, there's no way we are going to be able to do what we want to do just people walking into a store and buying off a shelf like it's just it's no there's just no way where there's no way that we can make the impact we want the global impact that we want doing brick and mortar so they decided to do network marketing because they knew that it was going to take passionate wellness advocates who learned about the oils, who um, you know, were trained on the oils, who could go out there and go into people's homes and sit with a group of people and educate them and teach them about the difference, teach, have the oils get on their bodies, on their hands, being able to go deliver samples and touch these people who need them so desperately. And so they did, and they chose that this was gonna be the route. 
And so you can see how incredible of a decision that was because all of us now are in business because of that decision. And some of us have been able to make it full time um, because, because of this business model. And it's, it's been beautiful, right? It's been a beautiful uh, way. Um, and now we're over 10 million customers around the world that have had doTERRA in their homes, right? And a percentage of those people are wellness advocates who are actually out there doing the work of sharing the oils so that more people can get the oils into their homes. And because of this business model, we've also been able to open in 20 different countries and have warehouses and staff and offices. And doTERRA is shipping to over, you know, 100 countries around the world people order what's called GAC. GAC means a global access country, meaning we don't have a warehouse there. We don't have an office there. We don't ship from inside the country, but those people in those countries are still ordering from the US and having it shipped in the US to a US address and then uh, like a rerouting service that then ships it to their country. So if you think of countries like Africa or my friend is in Chile right now and she's like, can I get doTERRA here somehow? And it's like, well, it's a global access country. I have a friend in Bermuda, it's a global access country. We don't have an office in Bermuda. So she needs her oil sent from doTERRA's head office to an address in the United States, which then sends it to her, right, in Bermuda. So those are global access countries, which means we haven't landed there yet because we don't have enough presence to warrant opening up an office. So um, some of you guys um, I know are in South Africa and South Africa was a global access country for a long time. And there were builders building in South Africa without having access to the oils in South Africa and literally we had to have enough people go gold in South Africa for doTERRA to say, we're going to land in Africa and we're going to open up and be um, what's called OTG, which means on the ground, meaning we have an office there. We have a warehouse there. We can officially sell there in, have, you know, materials in their languages and have pricing in their prices, right? So um, that is an on the ground market, meaning we have an office there, we have staff there, we have everything open market there. Um, and to build in a GAC, a global access country with, you know, that's a lot of work. Um, and then we have NFR, which is not for retail, meaning that, for example, if I in Canada buy from the United States market and from their warehouse, I can't resell their products here in Canada because I got it from the United States market. So that's an NFR and not for retail. Uh, because I can't sell it in Canada because it doesn't have Canadian labeling. It has the United States labeling. So that was a total side note, had nothing to do with network marketing, but I thought I'd tell you that anyways. <laughs> it might be useful in your business at some point. OTG means on the ground, meaning there's a warehouse in your country. NFR means not for retail, meaning it came from the United States and is going to another country, um, which means you can't resell it. Um, because it doesn't have your country's labeling on it and it doesn't have your country's like uh, legislation around what can be sold and what can't be sold. And then you have your GAC, which is a global access country, meaning we're not landed there. So you have to buy it from the United States, have it rerouted and shipped to you in your country. Okay, there's just a little side on how that works. All right, so let's get back to confidence in network marketing. So it is imperative that you gain that inner confidence in the business model that we use in order for you to grow your business. Because here's the truth of the matter. And like, give me a, hey, that's me in the comments. If when you started, you were shaken by some of the comments that people would make. Oh, is that one of those pyramid schemes? Oh my God, you're doing one of those, Ugh, right? Like, or, oh great. So you're gonna sell a product that's just inflated pricing because all of those MLMs just have inflated pricing, right? So that happens to a lot of us when we stay, right? It's possibly still it's you, right? You probably, you possibly still have those feelings where you're just like, oh my God, I hate telling somebody that I do know Dara because it's an MLM. It's, an, it's a direct sales company. It's a network marketing company. Like, ah, like I don't wanna talk about this, right? Yeah, that's definitely some of those things that shake us. And so when you are shaken in your business, do you want to know what that means? It doesn't mean that their comments are right or their comments are, you know, accurate. All it means is that you don't have enough confidence in what they are saying 
to not let that absorb into you. If you are actually taking that on, it just means you don't have enough information about it to be fully confident against whatever they're saying. So when someone shakes you, you just go and do more research. It is a, it is just a alert that you got to go do more research. That's it. It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, so let me first debunk the pyramid scheme thing. Would that be helpful? Do you guys actually know what a pyramid scheme is? Well, I think it's called like Ponzi schemes too, right? Okay. So here's the thing. There is something called the FTC. Okay. FTC. I'm just going to give you a list of acronyms today <laughs> that you're going to go away with. FTC. FTC stands for the Federal Trade Commissions. All right. Federal Trade Commissions are the people who are responsible for overseeing that there are not illegal operations going on. All right. So Federal, uh, federal Trade Commissions or the FTC is responsible for, it's a government run organization, association, whatever. It is responsible for shutting down pyramid schemes, okay? When pyramid schemes actually pop up and go into business, they are shut down very fast. They are illegal. So if someone says, is that one of those pyramid schemes? Probably not because we've been in business for 13 years and pyramid schemes are illegal. And if the FTC hasn't found us yet with 10 million customers, they ain't doing their job, okay? A pyramid scheme is illegal. A pyramid scheme is where the person on the top makes all the money, okay? And the people at the bottom, because it makes a pyramid, it makes a pyramid, okay? It makes a pyramid. The people on the bottom will never make as much money as the people on the top. Pyramids resemble the church, your job, like anything else you can think of, <laughs> okay? When I worked in the fitness industry, we had a CEO, we had an owner of the, the fitness club, okay? So I worked for the largest fitness chain in Canada. We had over 350 locations across the country, okay? We had our owner. It was a privately owned company by one man. We had then our chief operating officer, chief financial officer, chief information officer, right? Underneath him. Then we had our vice presidents. We had about eight vice presidents that oversaw different operations. Then we had about 40 divisional managers, which made, you know, in the middle six figures. Then we had me and my 350 co co-workers as general managers. Each of us ran a different location across the country. So as general managers, we made our income, which was about six figures. Okay. And then we had about 14,000 hardworking staff that made minimum wage plus bonuses, right? We had our personal trainers that made whatever they made 50 bucks an hour. We had our fitness advisor sales reps, which I was responsible for, which made, I don't know, maybe $4,000 a month. We had our front desk girls, which made minimum wage. We had our cleaners. We had our, you know, whatever lifeguards, if we had a pool. So we had all of these staff, which made always less money than the general managers and generals man managers always made less money than divisionals. Do you get my point? Is that that was a pyramid, okay? I would never make as much money as the owner. It's impossible, I'm under him, okay? That's a pyramid structure. Think about doTERRA. I know that I earn more income than some of my uplines because I earn a different rank bonus than they do. It doesn't matter that they were enrolled before me. It doesn't matter that they're above me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I earn a higher rank bonus than them some months. Therefore, I earn more income. It's, it's what it is. It has no matter where they are, how long they've been in. It's not a pyramid structure. It is not a pyramid structure at all. Now, a pyramid scheme okay, is where you take the pyramid structure, you can never make more money than the people who are above you. And the scheme is that it is a primarily business opportunity model, okay, which means that most of the people being recruited into this business 
are being recruited for the opportunity, okay? They're being recruited for the opportunity of making money and like the flash, the income, the like, you know, whatever, like they're, they're the, the, pay, the big paychecks or the fancy car you're gonna get. Most of the conversations, most of the recruiting is done for the opportunity for the business opportunity. And then they're like, what product are we selling? Oh, um, we sell, um, we sell uh, really fancy pens. Oh, okay, so I'm just selling really fancy pens. Yeah, mm -hmm, we're selling really fancy pens. So the product has nothing to do with it, right? It's like, they just, they kind of, the product was an afterthought. They sort of came up with the product because they had to move something in order for there to be a business that you're in but the product you know wasn't really like the focus right it was the business opportunity and yeah it was a pyramid scheme right it's like you're always going to make more money off the people underneath you and like there's really no product that you're so these get shut down very fast now this is another reason that doTERRA had to actually switch from we all used to be wellness advocates. When I signed up, everyone that signed up was signed up as a wellness advocate. We were all just signed up as wellness advocates. So we all had the opportunity to sell if we wanted to, but most people were customers. Well, we ended up changing the model because we really wanted to prove that we were a primarily product-based company because we're about 80% users are product users, right? Our customers and about 20% are building the business or sharing and earning commissions. So that's why we switched it. And now you're labeled as a wholesale customer or a wellness advocate. So we can prove if we ever got audited by the FTC and they're like, we want to make sure that you're mainly a product-based company. We could be like, no problem. Look at our back end. 80% of the people signed up are actually whole signed up as wholesale customers. They cannot and do not earn commissions or compensation. Only 20% are signed up as actual wellness advocates who have the ability to earn commission, which means we are a product-based company, which means we fall under the rules and regulations of the FTC and what they deem to be a, 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 a legal authorized network marketing or direct sales company. Okay. Are you guys with me so far? Do we kind of understand that we're not a pyramid scheme because those are illegal and we would have been shut down in year one? How have we been a pyramid scheme? Okay. So when you see those, those documentaries and those, you know, viral posts that happen, guys, that is all what we call clickbait. It's all so that these lawyers can make more money, try to create class action lawsuits. Like I remember this documentary where they were like, they did a whole documentary on trying to sue Young Living, the other essential oil company for being a pyramid scheme. And it's like, are you guys crazy? But how many of us don't actually know the difference between a pyramid scheme and a legal network marketing company and a legitimate network marketing company? So many people don't know the difference, which means they're like, oh, it is a pyramid scheme. And it's like, Guys, you know, these lawyers are taking advantage. They want your money so they can create this class option lawsuit that's going to get thrown out anyways because it is legal. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, all this to say, okay, so I just wanted to be, make it very clear what a pyramid scheme is, right? It's the biz opportunity where the product doesn't really matter. They're just, they're just recruiting people in to do the business. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Awesome, Kelly, I'm glad that landed. Um, and then we've got our actual legitimate direct sales network marketing companies that are based on the product that have, that have um, wellness advocates or educators or sales reps out there who are selling the product, okay? That is no different than you going into a store and the store associate earning commissions off of you. No different. It's no different, okay? So when you think about traditional marketing, traditional marketing is where we have a product. Let's take my iPhone, okay? This iPhone was created by Apple. Let's say it was created for $20, okay? Apple then needs to sell it to, um, you know, their wholesalers. So they need to sell it to Best Buy. They need to sell it to Jumpstart. They need to sell it to tell us wherever, right? So they need to sell it to their wholesalers. So now their wholesalers mark this phone up to 
um, $700 <laughs> because their wholesaler needs to pay for all their advertising, their staff, their commissions, their um, storefront, their rent. They need to pay for all of this stuff. So there's a difference. Okay. That's obviously like Apple doesn't make the phone for 20 bucks, but whatever the difference between the cost. And like, I'm even thinking one of my um, girlfriends, she's um, getting her uh, wholesalers for a supplement company. She gets a 50% discount. Why? Because she gets, she, for her to sell those supplements to her clients, she gets to earn the 50% commissions. So the company is selling it to her for $25 a bottle. She sells it to her clients for $50. She keeps $25. The company who sold it to her for $25 may be paid $15, but they have to keep a portion of the funds to pay for their overhead marketing, et cetera. So do you see that in traditional marketing and traditional sales, there's always a portion of the money that is saved for marketing, advertising, paying commissions, paying stores, paying shelf space, paying all of that. When you look at network marketing, the company is doTERRA. They sell the oils for wholesale pricing to us, to our customers, we get paid and the percentage that we get paid is 35%. 35% comes out of the price of the product. Usually most products, so if someone's like, oh my God, those prices are always inflated. Really? How much do you pay for? Here's a Mac lipstick. Okay. Mac brand lipstick, 30 bucks to buy this one lipstick. Okay. But it's a really pretty color, isn't it? <laughs> but this lipstick, 30 bucks. I always buy this lipstick because I freaking love it. I love their lipsticks. It's just the way that it is. I know it's not super clean, but I've tried other brands. I just don't like it the same, but I pay this $30. Why is it $30? Reputable brand, great marketing. They pay their people commissions to sell the product at the store, right? But I have no problem going and buying that $30 tube of lipstick when I could go to the dollar store and buy a dollar lipstick, right? But why do I do it? Because I love the brand. I love the way it goes on. I love the colors they have. I've been using it for years. Okay. So, um, yeah, Ruby Woo. I know Tanya loves her red Ruby Woo's. And so again, I know it's not the cleanest brand, but you know what? That's one thing that I use, but all of this to say, I have no problem paying like a lot more money for a $30 tube of lipstick when I just, I love that. I love that particular brand. But why do people say that network marketing companies are like inflated pricing? They say it's inflated pricing. They think it's because they're just paying us, but we only have a 35% um, um, like portion of the price of the oils that goes out to the commissions. That's it. Most companies is well above 50%. So when they say like, oh my God, that's so expensive, but it's because they're paying the middleman. Really? Because I can guarantee you right now that the shoes you're wearing have a much higher markup than 35%. And the lipstick you're wearing has a much higher markup than 35%. So the 35% comes from our fast starts bonuses, right? So we get paid out 20% on first level, 10% on second level, and 5% on third level, which is actually now changing to 20%, 10%, right? But still, it's still... Um, whatever that extra bonus is going elsewhere. So when you think about it, okay, the money is, is, is no different than traditional sales, but they're taking out the middleman. So because doTERRA doesn't have to pay for that middle person to sell our products, they're paying us instead. Guess what? They're only paying the results. They're only paying on results. Whereas when, if doTERRA chose to do a store, they'd have to pay storefront, overhead costs, employee wages, blah, 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 and not even guarantee that they'd sell a single oil. All that money would have to be dumped into all of that process, not even guaranteed to sell a single oil. But what I love about network marketing is that it is 100% based on results, okay? You do not get paid unless you are selling the product. I love this. I love this. Well, maybe it's because I am a salesperson at heart and I know how to sell and I know how to teach people how to sell. <laughs> so maybe that's why I love the fact that this is the model, but it's based on results. If you are just running your business from the sidelines, behind the scenes, maybe you just have it on your Facebook, like I sell doTERRA, let me know if you want it. That is not going to work. Okay. Just the same way that if a store went up in the mall and did no advertising 
did no like way of letting customers know who they were, what they were, they probably wouldn't sell anything either. Okay. So we save so much money in network marketing because we only pay out on results. We don't pay anything else. We don't pay you hourly wages to go out and teach classes, to go out and sample, to go out and whatever. We don't, no one pays you to do that. You get paid based on your results. Okay. So again, this is actually a better business model than most models that are out there. Okay. Um, so, um, the, the one, there's two other things that I want to share with you in this, in this training, um, to help you, how are you guys doing so far? Are you guys still with me? Is everything kind of like making sense and like landing for you? And it's like, you know, you kind of get it. You see where I'm coming from. You picking up what I'm putting down. Okay. We good still. Okay. So if it's cool with you, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to, um, I'm going to continue with two more things. Okay. If you can take this in, um, if not, that's cool. You can come back to this later. Okay. So, um, okay. So let's keep going here. So, um, one thing that I wanted to make a parallel for you to kind of help you see, um, how the network marketing industry is brilliant in its design and an extremely powerful business industry for you to be in. Um, not only from the fact that like you get to choose your own hours, you get to work it whenever you feel like it, you can close down shop, open shop whenever you want. Like, I love that feel. Um, but again, keep in mind, think about a store. I always say that you got to think about when you wake up in the morning, when it comes to building your business, you got to turn that neon open, open sign on. Okay. Because if you're showing up every day to work and you're just like, meh don't feel like it today. And you open your shop, you don't turn on the sign, you keep the door locked and you just go sit in the back and you like, uh, you know, play on your phone or you don't open the store today. Cause like, you know, just taking a day off or it's a busy day or you had a bad day yesterday or you didn't sleep well. So like, you just never show up to your store. Guess what's going to happen. People are going to stop coming because they're never going to know if you are like, you know, if you're there, right? They're like not gonna trust that they that that you're reliable, right? So think of your network marketing business as every day you have to wake up and turn the open sign on. You have to unlock the door because you run a oil boutique in the clouds, okay? Because it's not a physical location, but people will know that you're open based on how they see you showing proof that you live and breathe your business every single day, okay? And I, trust me, I am like a prime example of this. When I first started my business, I went hard for two years. Two years, I lived doTERRA. I lived, breathed, sleep, just all things doTERRA. People knew nothing about Jen Bittner other than she does doTERRA and she loves her oils and all of these things. And guess what? I scaled quickly. I was literally like, I was enrolling customers. I was enrolling builders. I was doing trainings. I, I climbed the ranks and fell back and climbed more and then fell back and climbed more. By the way, if you think that like, once you hit diamond, you're diamond forever, like it's not how it goes. If you think you're going to hit gold and be gold forever, it's like not how it goes, right? Like you, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go down, but it's like, you're, but you're always growing, right? So it's like two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, but you're like kind of always growing. Okay. So I scaled very quickly, very hard and yes. Okay. I hit diamond quite quickly, but it was also a different market at that time. Okay. Like, let's be real. And then for about three years after that, I was pretty consistently diamond because I was still very like invested. But then I was like flip flopping back and forth because I then started another company and then I started this and then I started that. And I started like venturing off into some of these other areas that I was in love with. And I started promoting that and I started showing up as, you know, a speaker now. And then I started showing up as whatever now. And I owned the dough planner. So like, I really got involved in the dough planner because I, I bought my sister out of this company, right? My sister and I started the dough planner together and I bought her out because she had other things going on. And I decided to take on the company full on. So then that became a huge focus of mine. 
And here's the cool thing, okay? So even though my rank was flip flop and going up and down sideways all over the place, I was okay with that because I knew at this point that I had created a residual income that I knew was pretty much never gonna dip below a certain level. And that is the other thing that is so powerful about network marketing, okay? Because right now, my greatest probably time and energy and resources is going into developing sales with soul academy some of you guys are in it some of you guys are part of it um and i'm just in this like new space and vision of like my what is inside of me like burning to come out is to help more of you guys make more money in your businesses okay so if someone follows me online now they may not even know i still have a doTERRA business because my focus my energy like is all around this like sales energy of teaching network marketers how to grow their business with confidence clarity and connection right and how to sell because i want to help more people do what i did like that makes me most passionate so what happened to my rank yeah of course i slipped and i dropped because guess what i'm not out there recruiting like i used to be and i'm completely okay with that because i know that what else I'm doing is still making a huge impact and getting more oils into more homes because I'm teaching you how to do it. Okay. So, but this is the cool thing about network marketing is that my residual is still here every single month. My unit level, my customers that are still ordering, my builders that are still building. And don't get me wrong, I still show up for my team. I still talk to my team like all the time, like all of these things, right? Like I still have things in place for my team that I've grown and I still recruit when it when it comes out like and stuff like that but what was I six years ago when I was building this from like a zero side hustle like nothing to diamond like that was my only one thing and that created me this residual like this residual so take out the rank bonuses which made up a lot of my income Right, take that out because that the rank flip might flip flop depending on how much of my time and energy is going into my personal business. My rank might flip flop. So if I took out the rank bonuses and I looked at the residual income that is going to stay with me for life because of the customers that I nurture and the business that I started, that is so awesome. That is residual income. The work I did at the beginning, the two years, the hustle, and then the three years following that where it was a pretty solid diamond um, because I was still like really invested in the work that I had done for the first two years was still like the momentum was there. And I was, still, you know, um, and then I always say like, I'm always going to come back and I'm going to rebuild up, um, rebuild up one of my teams that kind of like fell apart during the pandemic. Okay. I'm going to come back one day and I'm going to rebuild that diamond leg when I'm ready. But the fact that that residual income is still there even after like even when my hundred percent isn't in my personal business anymore it's more in your businesses right it's not in my personal business anymore and yet i can still reap the rewards of that guys where else could you do that i literally gave my freaking soul to my full-time corporate job for 11 years Okay. I was like known in that company for the work that I had done as a general manager, as a sales trainer, as like all of the things. And when I left to go on maternity leave, I never came back after maternity leave. When I left to go on maternity leave, I did not make a penny from that company for the rest of my life. And I still had people who I trained who I poured every ounce of my energy into, who were off being managers, making all the company, all this money. I didn't make any money off of the work I did with them to train them. Not a penny, okay? That is traditional jobs, right? I'm not still earning an income for the 10 years of effort that I put in, 60 hour work weeks. I never put in 60 hour work weeks with my doTERRA business. And yet I'm still getting to build and pull from a residual income from my doTERRA business that I put all of that time and energy into. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that awesome? Don't you want to do that? <laughs> right? And sometimes it takes a couple years of the hustle season to like get out there and build it and create the momentum. And here's like a, a little um, advice for you is that when you want to scale doTERRA, it has to be your one thing. Okay. I would never have made it where I made it to and created the residual I did if I had like 
three focuses and three different businesses at the same time as I built doTERRA. When I built doTERRA and I built my residual and I built my foundation, it was my one thing. It was my one thing. So even though now I have different businesses and all of that going on, the only reason I have the things I have now is because I was able to use and take the foundation I built with my doTERRA business and then piggyback. Like I was able to leverage because I was able to now live full time. My husband quit his corporate job to come home and be a full time dad. Okay. Which he rocks at. And he's always kind of had like his own thing on the side too, but he put his being a full-time dad in the forefront because of my doTERRA business. And then I went on to be able to create other things after that and, um, and yet still be able to pull an income from doTERRA. Isn't that like the coolest thing ever, right? Like, don't you want to like do that? Not share my story, but like be able to build a residual. And what if your residual was only $500 a month? But for the rest of your life, you got $500 a month. You have 500 bucks a month from doTERRA for the rest of your life. And it paid for a new car. Isn't that amazing? Right? Think about the possibilities that this offers, but it offers it to the people who are in this, who are doing it, who are showing up and that people know what you do, right? They know what you do. They know you do doTERRA. They know that, you know, like they know what your vision is and they know where you're going because you share it. Right. Um, okay. So I just really wanted to, um, really like hone in on residual and why that is so cool and so important. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, um, the last thing that I wanted to share with you is a, just a comparison. Okay. Um, because you might be asking yourself, yeah, well, I'm not you, Jen, and I don't have your personality and I don't have your energy or I don't have this, or I don't have that, or I don't have experience or I don't have whatever. Um, and you might not be thinking it's available to you. You might not be thinking that that's your story or that that is possible for you as well or whatever, right? Like you, you might be thinking whatever stories you're telling yourself, but I want to be very clear in how this works. Okay. I need some water. Okay. I want to be very clear in how this works. So I want you to think of it like the gym. Okay. Just because I have a lot of experience there. I want you to think of this like the gym. When people would join the gym, they were very excited, right? They came in and they were like, I want to lose 25 pounds. I want to lose 25 pounds. Like, this is very important to me. This would change my life. I'd fit into all my old clothes. I'd feel better. I'd be able to play with my kids longer. I wouldn't be on the brink of X, Y, Z, dis-ease, whatever, right? It was very important to them. So they signed up. They signed the papers. They signed on the line that was dotted. They got their gym bag, they got their new t-shirt and their water bottle. And they're like, yeah, this is awesome. Like, I'm going to rock this. I'm going to lose 25 pounds. I just signed up for the gym. I'm going to lose 25 pounds, right? And then what happens? Well, they would have to come three times a week. And that's hard work. They would have to rearrange things. They'd have to find someone to watch the kids. They would have to, when tired, still show up at the gym, put in the sweat equity of losing 25 pounds, which is like, hour long workouts three times a week. They'd have to eat cleaner. They'd have to stop drinking as much, stop eating fast food as much. Frig, man, these 25 pounds is going to be a lot of work. And maybe they show up and they don't know what the heck they're doing. They don't know how to turn on a treadmill. They don't know how to do a proper workout routine. So they stop coming. All that hard work has made it not very enjoyable to really want to lose those 25 pounds anymore. So they make the decision that Losing the 25 pounds, they're not willing to pay the price of losing that 25 pounds. The price is showing up when you're tired, finding babysitters for your kids, eating healthier, not having all of the snacks that they once had, you know, hiring a personal trainer to figure out how the heck to use the equipment. They don't want to pay that price, not just financial, okay? The price is sacrifice. They don't want to. So what would happen? Out of the high, like at my personal club that I ran, we would have to sign up 200 people a month. Okay. And to put this in perspective, each one of my sales reps had to go out and get 30 leads a day, 30 names and numbers of people who would potentially want to join the gym. And we were a physical location, which means we had to sign up 200 people a month just within our own radius around the club. I couldn't go sign up people in Guatemala 
that they weren't coming to my club, right? So if I could sign up 200 people a month from to come to my gym just in a little 10 minute radius of my club, we can sign up five people a month in our doTERRA business anywhere around the world, okay? I'll just start with that. But let's get back to this analogy, okay? So what would happen? We'd sign up 200 people. And naturally there's gonna be a drop off of the amount of people that would sign up to come to the gym versus the amount of people that would show up, right? Um, now some would come for the first six weeks, some would come for the first three months, and then naturally life would happen and people would start dropping off. And then they would get frustrated because they'd see the commercials on TV and they'd be like, uh, yeah, okay, Janine. Yeah, I see your before and after, but it's like 2% of people that actually get those results. Oh yeah, I tried that gym, total scam. You're not gonna lose 25 pounds. I didn't. And like no one I know ever lost the 25 pounds. How is that different from what we do in network marketing? I signed up for doTERRA or I signed up for XYZ company and they promised me that I could make $2,000 a month. Yeah, scam. Nobody was making two. Yeah, sure. That girl who does all those trainings. Yeah, sure. She makes six figures. Yeah, but that's like 2% of the people. Why do you think that is? Because like 2% of the people are willing to do the work that is required to make that. Where else can you make six figures like this? Nowhere. Have you ever just gone and applied for a job and been like, hi, I'd like to make six figures, but I'm only going to show up when I want to, if I feel like it, if I can find a sitter for my children, um, no, no more than two days a week. Um, would you go and be able to get a six figure income position with all of the things that you might be saying in your doTERRA business, right? So you have to look at it and say, it's all relative. Just like my people realized after they signed up at the gym that they were not willing to pay the price to lose 25 pounds. The people who were though, the people, my diehards, who I saw there three times a week, working out. They hired personal trainers, AKA hire a coach. They invested money in learning how to do it, invest money in courses. Like if you don't know how to do it, invest in yourself, invest in your business, invest sweat equity. Sweat equity is like your labor, your blood, sweat, and tears. You don't get paid for it. You are investing your time, your energy, your resources into making it happen. The reason people slam network marketing for not working is because they are not willing to pay the price to make it work. So the people on these documentaries who are like, oh my God, such a scam, did not make money. I'm like, girl, you did not try. And maybe you tried, but your try is not the try that would make the kind of money you thought you were going to make. Where else can you make that kind of money with the boundaries that you're putting on your doTERRA business, right? You are not in a place to put up these kind of boundaries if that's the kind of income you want to make right now. Go ask any diamond, blue diamond, presidential diamond, which I'll tell you right now, diamond's actually the hardest rank to maintain, right? But when you get over that hill, talk to a blue diamond, talk to a presidential diamond as well. Ask them, how many boundaries did you put up right at the get-go? None of them are going to be like, I had strict boundaries. No one can contact me on my personal phone. Nobody can. I will only go out and teach a class once a week. Probably not. Because we were all willing to do something to make this happen at the beginning. Okay? And just because maybe my schedule now doesn't look like it looked like back then, that is because of the beauty of residual income right? Is that you put in that kind of effort at the beginning, you do the right things, you step out of your comfort zone, you invest in the courses, you invest in the coaches, you do what you have to do, you go to the conventions, you don't miss the team calls, you don't miss those things that are there to help you grow, to help you get to the level, the skill set. If you don't have the skills to go up to the next rank, you go and you find them, you go figure it out. YouTube is free. Go YouTube the heck out of videos. This group is free, right? Go watch every video in this group. Skill up, make those things happen. But at the end of the day, the gym works for anybody that goes to it. The equipment is no different, but it only works for those who will do the work. doTERRA is no different from me, from anyone else who has had success 
We are no, we are each different individual people. The company is the same, which means it's the same equal opportunity, the same product, the same compensation, the same everything. The only thing that changes is the people who are working the business. The only thing that changes is the person who's willing to show up three times a week at the gym. Those success stories are because only 2% of people are willing to do the work, right? That's why we say in the world, 2% of people own 98% of the wealth, right? Or like 2% of the people hold that 98% of the wealth because you have to decide. And if you're on this call, it's because you actually are choosing to invest in yourself, learning, developing, doing the things, right? 2% of the people are willing to do the work to get there. 7% will make it to diamond. 7% of wellness advocates will make it to diamond. And then it's like the percentages go less when you go to blue diamond and presidential diamond. Why? Because not a lot of people are willing to do what we've done, right? And even right now, I'm not willing to do <laughs> what needs to get done to bring my own personal rank back to diamond. I've made the decision. I'm not willing to do that right now in this moment right? Because I know that I have a bigger purpose to do the other portion of what I've created with sales with soul. So I could teach you guys how to make more money. That to me seems like a bigger purpose than my own personal business. Everyone say hi to Jessica. I was <laughs> This is my friend, Jess. Bringing iced coffee. So oh, she's like giving seriously. you guys so much like energy. I'm like, I feel like she needs a little bit more of like a caffeine kick. This is my friend, Jess. She's living yeah. with me for two months and we have so much fun living together. It's so great. She's moving out <laughs> West nice and uh, I'm her, I'm her mid stop before she's moving out West. So, and she brings me iced coffees. Iced coffees this so is, this is the best. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your life. Well, we're almost done. We're wrapping up now, my friends, but this is what I wanted you to feel into, okay? Like this is the energy that I want you to know that you are with a legacy company. doTERRA is not going anywhere. They are known around the world. They are known in the most powerful network marketing circles as being a legacy company, meaning we have a killer compensation plan, okay? Go ask, like, we have a uh, presidential diamond in Canada who had left her, like, multiple six-figure career as a chartered accountant in Toronto, like, big-time career, left it for her doTERRA business because as a chartered accountant, she looked at our compensation plan and was like, this is gold, okay? We have a killer compensation plan with a long-term residual, okay? I, I encourage you to go for the rank of gold. Okay. I encourage you to go for your gold with your $1,500 bonus. That gold rank with your $1,500 bonus is equivalent of you having a million dollars in the bank account at a 5% return in as a retirement plan. That's insane. And that is what doTERRA can offer you. Okay. So we are not a pyramid scheme. Those are illegal. All right. It is the same work and effort as going to the gym to lose your 25 pounds. You just have to decide, are you willing to pay the price for that right now? And when I started, I was more than willing to pay the price. And that is why it happened. Just like right now, I can't be like, why am I still not earning my diamond checks? Well, I'm not willing to do the work right now for that. But when I am, you better believe that I will be right back up there. And if not at the next rank, when I want that because it's all up to me because others have done it, which means I know it's available to me and the company is not gonna change for Jen Bittner. It is the same for every single one of us. You get to make that choice, okay? I love you guys. I hopefully this was helpful and I will see you guys on our July team call with Brittany Frey, who is my diamond account manager at head office. She has agreed to come on and be our guest speaker this month. So we're going to be talking about why doTERRA, why now? And I want you guys to know that this is an incredible opportunity. You don't need to take it to the where I've taken it. You might just have that goal of $800 a month you make that $800 a month happen. It is available to you. It is available to anybody who wants to share these oils and do the thing. So get out there, do your amazing work. I love you guys. Have an awesome Thursday and I will see you guys um, on our next team call. Okay. Bye. I'm going to go enjoy my iced coffee now. Bye everyone.